Okay, so this is the photo we're going to be basing it off of. And since we are going to work uh, light to dark, start with some washes, we're first going to paint the sky and then some of the like reflection in the water. We'll have to move around to let things dry because water likes to stick to other water. So if I painted the sky and then I went and I put this right next to it while it was still wet, it's not going to stay defined. It's going to bleed and blur together. So that's why you have to think about like what order you do things in. So we're not going to sketch anything in pencil ahead of time. I'm going to have you guys follow along. So what we're going to do first is just take plain water on your brush. And I want you to paint kind of side to side about a little bit more than halfway down. So go ahead and get plain water on your brush and do that. And we got to move fairly quickly because we want to do it while it's still wet. Do you see how it's shiny? If it's dull, it's too dry for this to work because we're going to do a wet on wet technique to help the colors be really soft how they blend together. So in the photo, it's a very pale blue at the top. So we are going to swirl the brush around on the blue. And I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to go side to side. Sky and water goes pretty much side to side. And I don't want it to be very dark. Okay. So I'm going to kind of do a strip of that. And then you can even tilt it up and let the colors bleed down a little bit. So some blue, very pale and then let it bleed down because we're gonna get ready to come back with another color at the bottom. So it's okay to go all the way off to the side because the mountains will just come back over the top. So just a very pale strip of blue. If it seems too dark, just take water on your brush and you can go back and kind of like fade it. Um, and if it's still too dark, kind of blot your brush on your paper towel and then go back and lift it. So before that dries, we're going to come back and do kind of a red-orange, still not super dark, but we're going to do a little bit of it. So I'm getting a little bit of red paint, and I'm going to come down basically to the middle. And I'm going to rinse my brush real quick and get a little bit of orange. And I'm going to go right over the top. So I'm mixing it on the paper. And then I'm going to get my brush clean and come back just with water and kind of fade it up so it blends a bit kind of it's not like a stripe where one um, ends and the other begins it just blends now while i still have those two colors we don't want to do the mountains yet because we don't want it to bleed, you can see there's some of those same colors reflecting in the water. So we're gonna do the lighter part now, and then after it dries, we'll come back and do the darker areas. So I'm gonna take kind of the same orangey red. I'm gonna leave a gap. See, there's a gap here. We'll come back and overlap and paint the trees and the ground later. So I'm gonna leave a little gap, but I'm gonna come down here and do right through the middle a little bit oop that's a little dark that's okay because i can come back just with water and fade it out some more so a little bit of the orange and red side to side letting it blend letting it come out to the side if it starts to make kind of a funny pool like in my sky i can come back and just gently with my brush like blend that out a little bit so I'm letting it have like some streaks that go to the side because that's going to make it look more like water. And then I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna come back with once again, a pretty pale blue. It could be just a tiny bit like darker than your sky, but you still want it to be pretty light at this stage. So I'm gonna come back on the sides of the water with the blue and I'm gonna let it come right up next to the edge and it's gonna blend a little bit and that's okay. So you come in on the sides 
with a little bit of blue. If it leaves some tiny gaps of the white paper, that's okay because it's going to look like a reflection. There's not white watercolor paint. Some sets have it, but it's actually more like a gouache. In watercolor, the white comes from your paper. So if you ever have anything that you want to be like pure white to be a highlight, you would just leave a little gap in your paper between the paint. Now that it's dry, we're going to look at our next layer. So we're going to paint these mountain shapes and it's gonna overlap what you already painted from the sky. So you don't wanna leave a funny gap between the sky and the mountains because the sky would come all the way down to the ground, the mountains are overlapping it. So one thing you wanna look for when you're doing a landscape painting is background, middle ground, and foreground. So layers create the sense of space. Um, so I also want you to notice how it's a darker blue at the top and it fades to lighter like there's fog or something. So what we're gonna do, and if your sky's still wet, wait a minute, don't do it until I'm done and then hopefully it'll dry before then, is we're going to paint the upper shape of that blue and it doesn't have to be exact, but you do want it to kind of swoop down so that you can see, um, you know, you don't cover up like where the sun would be setting. It looks like it's still a little bit wet there, that's okay. So I'm gonna come back from the other side. The shape doesn't have to be exact. You don't want it to be too perfect though, so look for a little variation. So yeah, the water had pooled here like where the sunset is, that's why it's bleeding just a little bit. If you get a little uh, bristle from your paintbrush, just ignore it and keep going. Okay, so now that I have kind of that outline, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue, but I'm gonna fade it down into very, very pale, like almost white. So you want it to be darker at the top and then fade down into lighter. Because when we come back and do the trees, the trees are gonna be darker than the mountain, so they need to be able to show up on top. So whenever it's dry enough for you to move on, darker blue at the top, fading down into lighter. One of the um, cool things about watercolor is how the colors can pool and mix. And it doesn't just have to be flat. Um, we're like, that's something that's different than other styles of paint. So you can embrace that. Some people don't like watercolor because they think it's hard to control, but you really just have to like understand the nature of it. And you, I really think you only get that from practice. You gotta just learn how it feels. So you wanna fade it to lighter. And then we'll have to wait for it to dry a little bit again. But once you guys are done with the mountains, I will come back and show another step we can do while the mountains are drying. All right, next we're going to start working on the ground and the trees. I'm gonna start by painting the first layer of this section. So I'm going to get some green on my brush, knowing that we're gonna come back over the top of it because green straight out of the container looks a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna do a green strip a little bit lower, like on top of the water, you can overlap a little bit if you didn't really leave a gap. And I'm gonna get a little bit of blue to go along the bottom of that, because this picture of the time of day, it's not like a bright green. So I'm gonna do a little bit of blue along there. I'm gonna try to let it be lighter towards the top. I might hit just a tiny bit of yellow in that too, or maybe a tiny, teeny tiny hint of brown. I don't want it to look brown, but just to tone the color down. So just to have like the first strip there, I'm gonna 
add even more blue at the bottom. And I think I'm going to make a section that comes down here so it looks like it's there's a little like area where the water curves. So I'm going to add a little a little sliver there. So I want it like a blue green, darker towards the bottom. Still not using black. I'm trying to show you how you can like combine other colors besides just black to make things darker. So after you have that done, 